Hello, everybody. I am so glad that you came here tonight, or maybe you're watching a replay of this. And the topic is generally for my, what's called my best kidney support group. But anyone who knows somebody who has kidney disease, family, friends, or is just interested in listening about the topic, tonight we're going to be talking about celebrating our holidays coming up. Um, with people who are on dialysis due to kidney disease. It's a little bit specialized because they have a disease and they may have some medical issues and conditions that may inhibit them from maybe communicating with the group, um, maybe being able to be mobile around the group if they're in a wheelchair or if they have a walker or cane. Or a lot of the times with kidney patients, we have issues with um, eating different foods, and we are given a strict guideline of what we can and can't have. Now, I have been on dialysis before, but I have really good news. In August of this year, I received a new kidney, and the kidney is doing really good, and I am calling it the game changer. I, was, um, I received a transplant maybe about two years ago now, and he was called Big Al, but Big Al was not working from day one. There were some complications. So again, I had to go back on dialysis. So I've been on and off dialysis, I would say for probably the last five years or so. So I've been there. I've been celebrating holidays and I have been on dialysis and there's things that we're supposed to do and not supposed to do when we're on dialysis. So that's the topic we're gonna to talk about today. So holidays are a special time, right? It's to celebrate, whether you're Catholic, you're Jewish, um, maybe you celebrate Kwanzaa. We're all celebrating during this holiday season. And there are some people that really enjoy the holidays, right? They love to get together with their friends and their family. Maybe they like to give, give, give gifts, receive gifts. And for other people, it can be a really hard time, an emotional time that they're going through during this process of December and being involved in holidays. And it's just not December. I'm talking about December because, you know, Christmas and the holidays like that are coming up in, in this month. And you can apply it to anything from a birthday to a holiday celebration, an anniversary, Thanksgiving, anything like that. So you can apply this information. So like I said, if you are on dialysis, there's restrictions on what food that you can have. So if you're having a get together, a, fest a festivity, you want to think about things that a dialysis patient, a kidney patient can have and can't. So when you're planning your holiday meal, or if you're having people bring in dishes then think about that. You can go online and you can see what some of the things are that they can eat, what are some of the things that they can't eat. Or you can go right to like a DeVita site and they will give you some information about particular recipes that are usually better for dialysis patients. Now, this can not only cover what um, dialysis people can are supposed to eat, not supposed to eat. You can think about this if... You have somebody who you know has diabetes or heart problems or anything else where their diet is restricted. They can only eat certain foods or that's what the doctor says. Now, other people will say, you know what? It's the holiday. I'm going to eat and drink what I want to, regardless of what I'm supposed to do. And that is their choice. As long as they're in their um, right frame of mind, as long as they don't have like, let's say dementia, Alzheimer's, then stick with what they're supposed to eat most of the time if you can. But most people, you know, will probably say, you know, I'm just gonna enjoy the day and enjoy the people and not restrict myself so much. But it's always a good plan to have some things there that they can participate in as far as activities and as far as their food that they can and cannot have. So that's one thing to think about. Now let's think about their mobility. If they're coming in in wheelchairs, are you planning any activities where most people have to stand or walk around? Like um, some places I've been to in the past when I'm celebrating holidays is I've walked around a Christmas tree, right? That was one of the activities they had. So if you have somebody with a walker or a cane or a wheelchair, you have to think about, can they navigate that? Do they wanna participate? 
and you may have to give them some support. You can ask them, would you like some support? Would you like me to push your wheelchair around the Christmas tree for you? So those are the type of things that you want to think about if you have people with some sort of disability with their um, mobility, let's say, right? So um, it's always good to have a positive attitude in life in general. When it comes to the holidays, it's especially important because most of us are going out and being around family and friends. However, some of us are not participating. They're not being social. They're staying home. They're feeling lonely, isolated, those type of things. So if you know of anybody who is isolating their, themselves during the holidays, and it could be somebody that has kidney disease or somebody else, you know, it doesn't have to be kidney disease, right? Then um, you might want to give them a call, give them a text, give them an email, give them a hug, those kind of things. So they still feel like they're part of a community and they are loved and they're valued, even though for some reason they've chosen to stay home or their life circumstances won't allow them to go out or to travel to where um, let's say the family or the group is going to meet, maybe they can't travel to where that's going to happen. So that's always helpful for you to have a good attitude if you are a kidney patient and for people to reach out if you're isolating yourself. Another thing to think about is um, if you are able to help support others during this time, a lot of people think about donations to different support groups, different um, funding groups. And that's a great way to help celebrate the holidays, to give back. Another way, if you're able to be mobile and stuff, is help support people in other ways. Maybe you can bring somebody a, a meal, a hot meal, those kind of things. Reach out. There's all different types of activities that you can get involved with to help support community this time. I always find when I'm going through something, I feel so much better when I can get involved and I can help someone else, support someone else, and take the focus off of me. If I'm having some trouble where I might be feeling sad or depressed, I can get out of that state of being if I start participating by helping others. It kind of gets us out of our own way and think about other people, especially around the holidays. And it just doesn't have to be the holidays, but during the holidays, it's very important to not only um, learn about receiving the gifts and how to receive the gifts, the gifts are awesome, but also giving. So it's a give and take situation. I, that's what my belief is, is you give, then you receive. So um, those are some important things to think about for the holidays. Now, I will talk about some of my holidays because I have been on dialysis when I have had different events during the year where I have decided to participate or not participate. This last Thanksgiving, I had gone through my transplant and they tell you to stay home and stay away from big crowds and wear your mask um, because of COVID, those kind of things, because if you're watching this in the future, during this time in 2022, we're during the period of time where we had a disease called COVID and it was very, um, the doctors would say it was important to put a mask on, stay six feet apart, those kind of things. So I was staying home. And then I had an incident where I went to the hospital and I found I had a pulmonary embolism. For those people who don't know what a pulmonary embolism is, it's a blood clot and that big blood clot formed in my lungs. So it affected my respiratory system. And as you can see, I'm not on oxygen right now, but for a short while I came home after being hospitalized and I had to wear oxygen. So when Thanksgiving came around, I chose to stay home and not put myself in jeopardy because of those two situations that would put me more at risk for the flu, for a cold, um, to pick up COVID, all those kind of things. So I chose to stay home and I just made it a quiet day and I got a special dessert for me that particular day. I can't say a specific meal, but I um, allowed myself to have, I think it was coconut cake that I had. Now with the holiday coming up for Christmas this year, I'm hoping that I can get together with some of my family that's here in town in the Charlotte, North Carolina area 
and my two boys are coming in town. So I'm really excited about that. One of them is in the Navy and the other one lives in New York City and I'm in the Carolinas. So it's a distance for them to come here. But other holidays that I've had, you know, I've had some restrictions on what I'm supposed to eat, what I'm supposed to drink. And I make the best decision I can in that moment that I feel is best for me. Give myself a break sometimes from um, all the things that I'm supposed to do and just celebrate the holidays. And then other times I choose to go along and stay with the program and just eat what I'm supposed to eat. A lot of it depends on where I am in the process for myself. You know, am, am I at a good baseline that my medicines are stable, that I'm stable with my dialysis? And then other times if I'm having shifts in my minerals and my vitamins, those kind of things, or how much fluid I'm carrying um, on dialysis, I may choose to not eat those salty foods or not eat those things that I'm not supposed to, because I know that they will be repercussions when I do those kind of things. There'll be consequences possibly. So then I, I back off and I choose not to do it. That's just for me personally. I don't say one way or the other what you should do. There have been other years where I have not been able to travel to where there might be celebrations because on dialysis, I was going three times a week. That's what most dialysis patients do. And um, I was not going to veer from that, or I wasn't going to try to plan to go to an outside center. You can do that. You can go to the social worker at the dialysis center, and they can help support you to find a dialysis center where your festivities are going on, your parties are going on, If they're especially if they're out of town or you have to drive a distance there and you're going to spend the night, those type of things. They can help you with arranging those things so you can travel, you can be safe, even if um, you lack some mobility, even if you are on oxygen, those kind of things, the group that you're with, the dialysis center that you're at, they can help supply you with that information and get that set up for you. Usually that takes, I would say at least 30 days in advance to get everything arranged that they have to do to make that happen. It's not gonna happen like you go in on a Monday and say Wednesday, you know, I wanna fly to Florida to go and be with my relatives for Christmas. That's not gonna give them enough time to do that. So you don't wanna go without your dialysis because that's gonna put you in jeopardy also, right? If you're carrying extra fluid, if you're not getting dialyzed, your blood isn't getting cleansed. And that's so important to maintain your health and your well being while you're on the dialysis. Now, if you are on dialysis and you are a kidney transplant candidate, you may want to think if you're going to travel or not, because they may call you during that time. And are you going to be able to get back in order to get that kidney if you are on the list? And they call you first and say, we got a great kidney for you. You need to be here within the next like four hours, something like that. You have to come to the center. So if you're traveling, you also want to consider that. Um, so these are just a few tips for people that are kidney patients that particularly are on dialysis. Or if you're going to be having a party where you know somebody is on dialysis. If it's a friend, a family member, some things that you can think about when you know those people are going to be at your festivity or your party when you're celebrating the holidays. So I hope this is good information. You've learned some things that's kind of short tonight. I see that we don't have um, any people here online that wish to participate in the conversation. So um, if you're looking to find me, so you want to learn more information about what I do and who I am, there's several ways that you can do that. I own a company called Transformational Life Coaching. Doesn't that sound exciting? And you can go to the website and that um, website is thecreativelifebydesign.com. And I do many other things besides just coaching, but that's the main thing that I help support people who want to transform. I was feeling a victim in my life and I changed it around. So now I'm victorious in my life and you can do that too. And if you want my support, you know how to find me. You can also email me at beth at the creative life by design.com and I can support you there. And if you choose to call me, you can also call me on my business line. And that business line is 704 
218-918-9885. So you have several ways to get in touch with me. I'm on Facebook. However, I will tell you that if you have come to this Zoom or if you're doing a replay, that this is going to be the last Zoom call meeting that I have for this year. And I have chosen to shut down my Beth's Kidney Support Group on Facebook. I'm going to focus in this new year, 2023, on a new book that I'm writing. It's my third book. Yes, my third book. And it's got a funny name, so you're going to have to read it or learn about it in order to get the joke. But um, it's called What Kind of Kidney Beans? And yes, we are talking about um, dealing with dialysis and transplants and all kinds of good stuff, um, life tips on leading a better, healthy lifestyle, mindset, behaviors, so you can be a victor also in your life rather than feeling a victim. And I also have a clothing line through La Galleriste, and I'm a painter, and I paint on a canvas. I take a photograph, and I send it into La Galleriste, and I have a whole clothing line of wearable art, and you can find that on my website also. So that's what I'm up to this new year. I'd love to hear from you and see what you're doing during the holidays. Like I said, my two boys are going to be in town, so I'm going to celebrate with them. It's a very special time with my new kidney and doing that. And um, I'd love to hear what you're doing. And I hope you have a great holiday. Reach out if you're looking for support during this holiday time. See you next time out there on Facebook, maybe. <laughs> Good night.